Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we sit back, relax, take the midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I've been stone joined every week by Jill Bryant, and it's a good thing nothing broke because I just hit the scroll wheel up and I was on the wrong window. And when you do that, sometimes you get a hold to a bar. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's what that does. Huh. <laughs> so what's going on? What's new? I've been playing around. Um, we were talking on Linux Gamecast Weekly on Saturday that NVIDIA is like, ooh, we're going to have to cut back supply of the 4070. They aren't flying off the shelves. I'm like, yeah, they're not, <laughs> but you know what? I still want one. Try not to buy one. Trying What I'm doing is fighting um, everything going on in the back of my head, trying to justify the mental gymnastics that your brain gets up to. It's like, no, no, no. You see, if we get it, we can make, you know, it'll break even. Yeah, I'm like, no, no, it won't. we got to get that epic system put together first. But... Mm -hmm. We were talking in the pre-show, and Jill's bought um, like fourteen hundred yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, actually, all thousands of I've, games. I've bought about fifteen because I got them all for like two or three dollars. Because uh, Steam is having their Puzzle Fest sale, which is happening till May first. Completely and... different reaction because just yeah. like yes, puzzle reaction. I saw that notification and I clicked <laughs> on it in Steam because you know how it turns blue when you get like an announcement from Steam, and I clicked on yeah. it. It said puzzle. I'm like, why did you just waste my time? Val? Oh, oh, man. <laughs> Anyways, it's my first person. Uh, puzzlers are is my favorite genre of games. Not unlike, you know, Portal and Portal 2 and the Tales Principle. So I picked up uh, Cube 2. Uh, the original Cube was one of my very favorite uh, puzzle games, and it was one of the first available for Linux back when uh, Steam started Linux support. And I, I love that game. It's really cool because you manipulate uh, different colored cubes in extrusions or... Uh, you know, one color lets you extrude it, and another color lets you jump to uh, get through the map and get to the exit point to get progress to the next map. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. And I also love the there's um, a series of games called Far Away puzzle games, and it's a trilogy, in fact. And so I picked up Far Away Jungle Escape and Far Away Arctic Escape. And those have been really fun. Those ones are more uh, uh, chill, kind of go at your own pace. It's a real relaxing game to kind of unwind with after a long day of work. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think when it comes to like the puzzle ideas, it's, I, I, I can take puzzles in bits. Probably the best um, mm. analogy for that would be like the Tomb Raider series. Yeah, I was just, I was thinking about you with that event because I know you do like puzzles, but as long as there's some other action and, and story going on. Or it has to be yeah. like a genuinely hard puzzle. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's got the, like, where the borderline doesn't make a good game. Average people are not going to like them. You yeah. Know? Um, <laughs> something like Baba is You or Steven Sausage Roll or Super Liminal. Yeah. Anti Chamber gets... is another good one for you, Vin. That's one of my favorites. Eh, that was <laughs> abstract boring. puzzle. No, abstract puzzle. Oh, I've played Anti Chamber. Like I was speaking of, like one of the first games on Linux. Yeah. Oh Steam. yeah. Yeah. yeah that was fact, like in a humble bundle way back God. when. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was even before. Just it was during the Desura days. <laughs> and I mean, there's other titles like you know, like other. If if it's got a good sense of humor, I can put up with it. Like think about um, the Stanley Parable. Yeah, I love the Stanley Parable. And that one's the fun. Beginner's Guide is mm -hmm. another good one. And yeah. like currently, I play puzzles twice a week because we uh, do Trackmania. Come join yeah, us for that exactly. on Tuesdays and, and Fridays. That's a puzzle game, like yeah, it or not. Yeah, and that's another reason why I love that game so much. It's not just racing. It's a puzzle racing game. <laughs> right. It's a weird mix that takes yeah. a certain, because it requires some physicality to it. You know, it's not just sitting and thinking. You also got to use your reflexes to solve the puzzle, too. Mm -hmm. which is a fun thing. So, Space mm -hmm. Lobsters is the first yeah. thing we're going to be talking about <laughs> this week. Yeah. Little known fact, lobsters can survive in space. Yes, they can. <laughs> so, the latest short-term release of the Ubuntu Linux operating system, Ubuntu 23.04 Lunar Lobster, has just been released. And this release is supported for nine months with bug fixes and critical app updates. And it includes, the big news about this release is it includes a new installer made using Flutter 
and which le leverages Subiquity, which is canonical CLI installer for Ubuntu server and Curtain Technologies. And um, I was really, I, I really like the new installer. It's really modern looking, has an improved partition manager and a nice looking slideshow during the install, like all good installers do, but, but it integrates very, very nicely with Ubuntu. So I think that was a really nice choice. And you get a new GNOME 40 feet, 44 with some Ubuntu tweaks, including a new a screenshot button on the quick menu, quick Bluetooth toggle to view and manage devices, updates to the file manager, like, you know, improved search speed, and you can monitor background apps, including when you install flat packs. You can monitor them, monitor them in the quick menu on the, on the top right. And there's lots, like tons of updates to the Nautilus file manager, including a thumbnail view in the GTK file picker, which we have talked about here on the show before, and an expandable folders option for list view. Also, along with the beautiful new Lunar Lobster wallpapers, I, I love these wallpapers. They are some of my favorites that Ubuntu has done. You get Linux kernel 6.2. And like we have talked about before, with this release of Ubuntu 23.04, there is a separate mini 140 megahertz, mega, 140 megahertz. <laughs> There's a mini 140 megabyte ISO file. <laughs> you remember that one that me and Ven were kind of puzzled by? <laughs> so, but we have that, so that's, that's good news. And there are two new official flavors in this release. Ubuntu Cinnamon and Edubuntu. And you can download Ubuntu 23.04 from the official Ubuntu website or just do, do a standard upgrade uh, from the command line or the GUI. So it's easy. So like most of you at home, I'm like, who still uses Ubuntu? I do. I'm using it right now on my uh, studio rig here. <laughs> uh. But I use LTS. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There, there was a there was a time I would be excited about canonical and Ubuntu releases. That time's long since gone, man. But you know, some people are out mm -hmm. there now. Speaking of stuff you might want to use in your studio, twenty three oh four mm -hmm. is going to roll around to different spins as well. Starting with Ubuntu Studio twenty three point oh four. Yeah, mm -hmm. you might know it. You might love it. You know, this is traditionally the um, studio that you'd use. Well. The distribution that you would use if you were going to be setting up um, real time audio or anything like that. But there's a big announcement for Ubuntu Studio with this, and it's, it's a big change. Pipewire is now the default sound server for this. So yeah, that means, like, without any configuration, mm -hmm. all of your Jack and Pulse audio stuff is just going to work without any type of configuration. Neat, right? And it even comes with um, patches. So all of your mm -hmm. advanced routing and all that, it's right there, fully compatible with the Jack. However, uh, they do let you know that, well, Pipewire is meant for desktop users, not yeah. pro audio or prosumer audio. And it's not just them. Robin, uh, the other developer, primary developer of Outdoor, had a, you know, he came in and said what I've been saying for the past couple of years. You know, he's like, Jack is mature and reliable. Musicians can trust it on stage. Pipewire is still under heavy development and sadly not yet ready for prime time, which is a sentiment that I echo myself. No, we all love Pipewire. It's come a long way. It's a really great sound server, but it's still got a long way to go before it's going to match Jack. Jack has the advantage of being done, basically. Yet it's in maintenance. It's like, there's not really much needed to be added to it. However, Jack's always been a bit of a monster to set up, especially for somebody coming new to Linux. But you'll learn a lot on the way to properly configure a box. And traditionally, that's what Ubuntu Studio has been used for. So now, I have to give a think to if step one with Ubuntu Studio is ripping out Pipewire and manually installing Jack, why would you be installing Ubuntu Studio? Mm. I think this is a fair thing. Unless, you know, the Ubuntu studio is geared towards people who want to play around with audio, which is cool. That's awesome because, you know, you may, it might get you interested in something to move further down that line. But, yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. 
Um, I, I, I keep waiting for Pipewire. Just uh, we we need Firewire support. We need NetJack support. They're going to work on the latency and reliability. Yeah, the that, latency is a big one, especially for you, Vin. Again and again mm -hmm. and again, I will say, uh, love the Pipewire project, and it is ready for desktop use. If you're gaming, if you're streaming. Like, but when you're gaming and streaming, and I'm like, yes, but I'm doing it at a different level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a whole different game. And I was having this discussion earlier this week with um, trying to explain, you know, a digital audio workstation, setting up a DAW, little W versus big W. You know, digital audio work, you know, I, I've set up a DAW, digital audio workstation, and, and I'm like, no, I set up a digital audio workstation, period. I'm thinking about doing a, maybe a setup guide with that and trying to explain, well, let's go to any professional studio I've ever walked in in the entirety of my life. There's always the one air gapped machine running everything that you don't touch. Yeah. You yeah. don't upgrade anything. <laughs> and, uh, that's a workstation. So, uh, I, I don't know. It's cool that everything's been updated. I'm looking forward to, uh, Oh yeah. That's another thing. It's got snaps. Mm -hmm. What do you What are your thoughts? You, you love snaps, though, right? <laughs> no, not my favorite. Oh, they they really have improved the Firefox Snap. is it, it is much quicker these days. They are doing a lot of Ubuntu is doing a lot of improvements to Snap. Hmm. <laughs> but I don't. I I just don't for the desktop now. It's good for server side and cloud. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's been interesting. I know, I know we've talked about it. Uh, several times about you know where canonicals come from and like where it's at now it, it just feels very businessy I'd, I'd feel the same way if i was talking about like rel you know it's like mm. hey look there's another red hat enterprise linux release that things are updated neat yeah katie and lime's out though and there's a couple of new yeah. features in that oh absolutely isn't this like one of the most flashiest it is i know the website is right? very busy <laughs> So yeah, Caden Live 23.04.0 has been released and it has lots of new awesome features. There is a new timer filter which allows you to add a counter overlay on your videos and you can adjust the counter overlay, the font, the position and format and make it really pretty and integrate nicely with your video. And this release also comes with OpenAI's Whisper Speech Recognition, recognition System which handles punctuations beautifully and supports many languages. And you can automatically translate text to English using OpenAI's Whisper, which is really awesome and handy. And something I'm really happy about, uh, there's new transitions in Caden Live. It's been a while <laughs> since we've had new transitions. Ones that I, you know, these are ones that I'm used to using in other nonlinear video editors. There are wipes, slides, and circular wipes which is, you know, have, have been around, honestly, since the 90s. So <laughs> it's nice to see that Caden Live has integrated those into their software. And the KDE Store actually has a new category for Caden Live project files where you can download animated templates made by the community. This is really awesome. This is, this is one of the coolest features, honestly. So some of these animated templates allow you to bring multiple videos together with various slides and transitions. So I think it's really, really nice that they, you know, they thought about this in the community and the having, letting the community bring in their own uh, templates is really, really cool because we can all learn from each other and others, you know, other people's tricks. And there's another really big feature of Caden Live, which I'm going to have Vin tell you about. One of the neat things are that you can do with, and you really mm -hmm. shouldn't do it, but you, you misuse timelines and nonlinear video editors because you'd be working on animations and other fancy things. So you end up stacking multiple tracks on top of each other. This gets out of hand and gets unhinged quick when you have mm -hmm. Mount Everest of effects, transitions, layers, flips, and switches way down at the bottom. That's mm -hmm. where your media file is. You're like, oh mm -hmm. boy, this is getting out of hand i'm having to scroll down <laughs> yeah. and all that and you're like well did you just create a compound clip yes but then you need to change something so then you have to explode everything again then make little tweaks how do you get around that traditionally you use embedded 
timelines or nested timelines where you can have yeah. multiple segments of your project open at the same time. So you can work on that main transition or work on some B-roll footage. And now you can do that in KDN Live, which is great to see. They are like super handy when you're working with any type of a complex segment. I use it in DaVinci Resolve all the time when I'm doing videos and setting up mm -hmm. special like intro and outro shots. So uh, very happy to see that. And Joe pointed out that it has the OpenAI Whisper. So if you got, uh, I mean, you can do it on CPU, but if you get an NVIDIA GPU, go ahead and play with that. It's super yeah. neat and um, generate subtitles, a bunch of fun stuff like that now. Yeah. So do. cool. Yeah. Mention and about the, the, oh, uh, nested timelines. That's something so important that, that that's the, the biggest deal about this release because all the other professional nonlinear video editors have nested timelines. And so Katie and live integrating that. Yay. <laughs> makes it that much better. And I know years ago when I was teaching um, Adobe After Effects, After Effects was actually the first program to have, one of the first programs to have the nested timelines. And then they brought it, you know, trickled it down to Premiere and then Final Cut got it and then Avid got it. So it's, it, it's, it's about time. And we got DaVinci Resolve has it. And now Caden Live, they're getting closer and closer to, you know, their prosumer <laughs> end of things. <laughs> Well, one of the things I think they're going to be able to work on, and it's going to be interesting to see because they make a little note right at the beginning. They're talking about uh, later this year, they're going to be moving over to QT6. And QT, uh, QT6 has improved GPU support. And this is the one thing I say every time we talk about KDN Live. Because uh, my biggest concern about KDN Live is adding these features without fixing the core problem, mm -hmm. which is hardware accelerated timelines, plugins, and effects, mm -hmm. which makes it feel really sluggish when you're using it. My, you know, I will definitely tell you, like, don't use DaVinci Resolve on an NVIDIA GPU on a high core count system if you ever want to use anything else. Like, oh, wait, oh, wow, this, this is how uh, pure speed is. And I say that, and I always hope, like, come on, let's work on that eventually. But I downloaded the app image, and like, when it comes down to, like, acceleration, though, it was, it was struggling to play the video that we were recorded for, I just popped in like, I think the news segment into the timeline and it's DNX HRHQ, 1080p, mm -hmm. 44, well, 422. And they were struggling just to play it in the timeline. Oh, uh -huh. uh, I don't know. And then again, I don't think Katie and Live is really going, I, I think it's a super cool program for amateur like video creation. It's like, it's got, Tons of features and all the great stuff. I've used KDN Live for years too. I'm not speaking from lack of experience. Yeah. And uh, my wants are going to be completely different than somebody's like, no, I want to make a little family video or something like that, or a little video to put up on YouTube. I, I'm, I'm here like, I, I want to pull you up to where Blender is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But, you know, wants and needs and all that fun stuff. So, uh -huh. <laughs> great work. It's an app image. Go download it. Go play with it. Yeah. It's completely awesome. free. It's open source. And there's uh, nothing but fun to be had. Now, mm, now over here. Or something Ven has done. <laughs> this little, if you're watching the video version, you can see like a little bit. You can see it a lot better on um, Sundays when I do the editing stream. This is the DAW. Well, this is the screen where the DAW is. Uh, Digital Audio Workstation. Talking about that earlier processes all the audio in the studio. And it's called Reaper. And you shouldn't fear the Reaper. In fact, don't fear the ping one, one should say. And Reaper's like super popular, especially with the kids is what all the hip kids are using these days. But it's starting to make its way into studios because people are like, I do not want to deal with Pro Tools. Uh, Understandably, yeah. <laughs> right? And um, it's completely cross-platform. This is one advantage we always end up making these weird trade-offs. I know you're going to say Outdoor works on Windows, but the developer of Outdoor says it technically launches on Windows. I don't recommend running it on Windows. That's not me saying that. <laughs> um, Reaper runs very well on Linux, Windows, Mac, and Raspberry Pi. And you can swap, you know, if you're working on something and your friend's running Windows or Mac, or you just get it running on Raspberry Pi because they're psychotic. And I'm like, that's awesome. I love psychotic people like that. Um, you can switch projects back and forth as long as you keep your plugin compatibility reasonable. Now, what do I use it for? I kind of misuse it. Now, it is recording our audio, multi-track audio, but I also use it 
as a digital mixer, which is something I really want to drive home when somebody's like, I want to start streaming. What do they do? They want to run out and buy like some little cheap mixer. Like, no, you don't. It, you, you can use it. You have the software. You can do the same thing with Audor. If you watch Jordan does a smaller version of what I do with Audor, you can do this with open source software as well. But I wanted to show people how to get it up and running on Linux because I, I went looking at YouTube videos and I'm like, these aren't very good. Also, they were just YouTube videos. So I made, this is the first, I'm going to be doing a series of Reaper on Linux, just doing this because this is what we use. I'm going to walk you through download, installation, and a really, really important one, which is a high DPI fix. Because if you crack Reaper open on um, 4K screen, you know, you get a laptop, laptop 2K, something like that. It is mice type. It's unreadable. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to get that fixed. And of course, how to get rid of it. Because I saw all of those were missing, and I think it's a great piece of software. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly stable, and um, it's not open source, but it's Linux native, and there's a lot of misinformation. Also, that guy in the Reaper forums is like, "Man, I'm new to Linux. I just want somebody to make a guide. Really simple." There you go. <laughs> Done. That Yay. inspired me to. This is a refined version. I'd made an earlier version for patrons for them to look in. You know, this one's been tweaked out and completely reshot. So. That should get you up and running, making the beeps and boops <laughs> on Linux, or maybe just recording a podcast, whatever you want to do. You can use it for live effects, even though I don't have any live effects set up right now. If this was a Saturday, I'd give you some echo, but. Aw, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to appreciate how you showed them to increase the DPI or the high DPI monitors. I mean, the font size. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> it's one of the few things Scaling. that doesn't work out of the box and you know like yeah. with everything else like they need to have a commercial issue you're, you're gonna run into quirks and man i remember the first time i opened uh a daw it's like man i knew audacity i can use audacity and i know how to record this stuff you crack open a DAW, i'm like what is this what nonsense? is this it's a new language <laughs> how do i gotta route this stuff and then you're like hey are you good at lua scripting i'm like no <laughs> like, don't alert i'm like oh okay now i use js script with a reaper but yeah i mean for anybody even if you just want to make music if you want to start recording this is a good way to get into yeah. it so yeah there you go and it's all made possible by you everyone supporting us over at patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast we got a bunch of different ways to support the show but we got a bunch of bonus stuff if you want to support us over there you get access to our discord show notes um you know any invites we do for live streams game groups and stuff like that jordan's going to be streaming tomorrow if you want to come play with him for uh what is he playing uh adventures uh sorry. oh strange brigade strange yes. brigade that's it yeah <laughs> go hang out with that you can come play with me and jill on tuesdays and fridays we do the track media streams and uh, a bunch of stuff going on you get a custom rss feed if you like this there's a couple of hundred extra hours of show that you've never heard mm -hmm. that you can get for a buck a week uh, you get a custom rss feed you can put that into any pod catcher they still call them pod catchers eye catchers i don't know yeah, internet audio catcher. things and listen to the live and uncut version of the show which is typically like an hour and a half two hours long instead of like mm -hmm. 30 minutes so if you want more of that in your life and the same goes for linux gamecast it's all in one it's a bunch of stuff being thrown at you we got amazon wish list we got a store all this stuff is available at linuxteamcast.com under the support button. There it is. Ta -da. Yay. Marketing. We've done yes. it. Yes. <laughs> and you can go get some uh, Frank merch for Frank the Skeleton. <laughs> That's in Ven's studio. <laughs> now, ladies him. and gentlemen, we're going to talk about uh, GPU Ooh. Pi. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a, a white GPU with a a slice cut out cut out of it and the the uh in, in, in the internals between the the top and the bottom layer are rainbow colored. <laughs> that Nutritious was awesome then. and delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about this crazy thing. This is over at jeffgearling.com. And it took me a couple of read-throughs to get exactly what's going on because mm -hmm. it's not explained mm -hmm. particularly well. However, um, this is the pig. 
Not the, yeah, it's the Pi 4 <laughs> GPU. Oink, oink. Pi's go oink now. Hmm. It's a passive base. Like everything you're seeing in the photos is like the carrier board. There it is. This block down below the red card, that's our pig. Now, um, it's used to hold the red card, which is, uh, you know, it's a PCI Express by 4 that it holds a compute module 4, but it's got all the breakouts on the back. Mm -hmm. So you got access to your HDMI network and you can power it. What does this do? This makes it extremely easy. What you do is you can plug a full size, like 4090, into the board itself without having to mess with wires and cables. You got a nice little base. You got a by 16 slot. You got the by 4 slot. So you put the compute module on its card in there. Then you can just start testing out GPUs or other PCI Express devices without having to... Uh, just mess around with like adapters and all the other dodgy things that you see people doing. Yeah. However, it's kind of a bad state. Um, Jeff got done with us and he's like, well, what works? Eh, some older AMD GPUs. That's, that's yeah. part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've been watching Jeff. Yeah, I've been, you know, watching his progress on this for a long time. He's been at this for a few years, actually. And it's really amazing. He's been trying to get these GPUs working with the Raspberry Pi. And he hasn't gotten everything wor wor uh, to work yet, especially on the NVIDIA side, uh, because uh, their drivers are not completely open source yet, hopefully soon. <laughs> but I know he, you know, he will get, get the NVIDIA GPUs to work someday. And more modern cards don't work yet. But it's 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 a start. He he definitely he got a few more uh, things. The uh, communication with the PCIe uh, he got that working a lot better with this card, where he, is he he wasn't before because the apparently then the 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 Raspberry Pi doesn't have you know a full compliant PCIe stack. No, not support. really. It's like a buy yeah. two. Yeah, um, it's like a buy two. It's not a sixteen. So, <laughs> but he was talking about the possibility of doing this for some other boards which have full yeah. PCI Express. Which uh, you know, we were talking about that in the after show last night after Trackmania again. Like that, our, our futures are not going to be Raspberry Pi based for like hobbyist stuff like this. People are going to move on to you know available things. It's not even bigger and better, even yeah. though they're bigger and better exist right now and it's cheaper it's just available stuff like this so you know especially how hard it is to get a hold of compute modules mm -hmm. old jeff's got about 30 of them yeah <laughs> he bought them back when <laughs> so those are sitting out there that's neat i love to see stuff like this and uh yeah you know just when it comes to like just testing like hey i wonder if this works how much time this saves so just having a plug-in solution like that oh i know and i Amazing. do like the warning this is the one thing I would change about it is because when I first looked at this, it's, you know, that it just has a standard PCI Express by four connector. Somebody's going to stick that in their computer and Jeff's like, I do. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Which oh. is code for like, I don't want to find out what would happen. <laughs> Fries the motherboard something or something. Bad <laughs> happen. Yeah, hopefully yeah. <laughs> nothing bad could happen. But I, that, because uh, when I first saw that, I'm like, cool, I can just pop that in a PC and have like a little pie that I can access. I'm like, no, 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 you're, no, you're, no. you're just reading this wrong. And I'm like, well, by the looks of it, you know, if somebody, <laughs> if somebody handed that to you, you're like, oh, neat. You pop it right in your PC. I'm like, cool. How do I, act? or it probably won't blow up. I changed the connector type on that into something other than a buy four. I know it's convenient to do buy four because everything exists for it, but I don't know. Find some mm -hmm. other way. But, you know, you got to imagine, though, if anybody's actually going to be getting one of these or making, they're going to know what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a problem <laughs> for somebody in the future who sticks it in. Yeah, and it was actually really fun. I, I started watching his video, and it, it looks really nice, the way he has the uh, 4090 set in there. It, it looks very clean and sleek. <laughs> Did a good job with it. We need a breakout for uh, ISA so we can get yeah. old um, ad lib <laughs> cards or anything like yeah. that. How about extended ISA? Yes. <laughs> EISA, we do whatever yeah. that crazy thing IBM had on the PS2s for a hot minute. Yeah. I have EISA sound cards. I have EISA video cards. 
<laughs> All I the think, things. I don't know if I have any um, ISA video card. I'm, no, that one's a PCI card. I thought it was ISA. I have some ISA sound cards. Yeah, I have yes. some Sound Blaster uh, cards, man. Like, that's a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's a deep cut. Uh, what I was interested in, speaking on the topic of ISA, there's a guy who's got um, ISA. Where he, what did he build it? He built an ISA bridge using the uh, TPM module on a motherboard, like just oh. something completely <laughs> unhinged. And I'm like, what? I got to go back and see what his progress is on that. But everybody, thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out. We got to run. Mm -hmm. uh, come watch us live if you ever get a chance. We do this every yeah. Wednesday at 3 Sounds p.m. Fun. Yes. But until next week, enjoy some credits. Yay. <laughs> I love what my Steve husband said in class. <laughs> in class? <laughs> what my Steve husband said in chat. He said E-I-E-I-O because he doesn't know what we're talking about. It's all gibberish to him. <laughs> Aw, thank you to our advisors. Our Theron, who's one of them, who, who contributed uh, quite a few stories this week. <laughs> and always. You're awesome. You're awesome, Artharian. And thank you to our all our wonderful patrons, our sea monsters, and our death notes. We have lots of cool named levels for our patrons. <laughs> uh, Strider of Lutris says that it's gibberish to me as well, Jill. <laughs> all right, beautiful people. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, all. Love you. <laughs>